हेलो एवरीवन, आई एम गौरव अत्री असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कॉमर्स द भोपाल स्कूल ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस भोपाल टुडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक एनालिसिस और सिंपली नोन एज मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स इन टुडेज लेक्चर द मेजर टेक अवेज विल बी मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक कॉन्सेप्ट इट्स डेफिनेशन नेचर इम्पॉर्टेंस लिमिटेशंस एंड टाइप्स ऑफ मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स डिफरेंस बिटवीन माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स एंड मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स द मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक इशूज इन इकोनॉमी सो लेट्स स्टार्ट स्टूडेंट्स यू हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड अबाउट इकोनॉमिक्स एंड यू आर ऑलरेडी अवेयर अबाउट द टू ब्रांचेस ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स एज वी नो इकोनॉमिक्स इज अ सोशल साइंस दैट इज कंसर्न विद द प्रोडक्शन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड कंजम्पन ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज इट स्टडीज हाउ इंडिविजुअल बिजनेसिस गवर्नमेंट एंड नेशंस मेक चॉइसिस on allocating resources to satisfy their wants needs trying to determine how these groups should organize and coordinate efforts to achieve maximum level of output economics can be broadly broken down into two parts that is macroeconomics and microeconomics the two branches of economics in today's lecture we'll be talking about the aggregate behavior of this economics that is the macroeconomics let's quickly recall the anatomy of economics economics is broadly divided into two categories microeconomics and macroeconomics microeconomics is further classified as product pricing factor pricing and theory of economic welfare whereby product pricing deals with the theory of demand and the theory of production and cost and as you know factor pricing deals with the land labor capital and entrepreneur which gets rent wages interest and profits moving forward to the quick introduction of macroeconomics as you already are aware about macroeconomics is a term which is derived from the greek word macros which means large or as a whole this term has been first coined in 1933 by rational french in 16th and 17th century mercantilists made this term more popular and they talked about dealing with wealth 18th century was a time where circulation of wealth was considered as a key important aspect of macroeconomic analysis but further this subject got popular and a revolutionary change came when john menard keen in february 1936 brought his book the general theory of employment interest and money whereby the old thought and microeconomic variables were not able to answer the economic problems the modern contributors to the macroeconomic approach are walrus wixell fisher and various others keynes developed a general theory of income output employment in the wake of great depression The concept of macroeconomics is very simple and it talks about the economy as a whole whereby the goal of this particular analysis is to understand the economy and the perspective focuses on not individual but the firm not as a single unit but as an aggregate of all these things so the macroeconomics has two types of policies number 1 the monetary policy and number 2 the fiscal policies which talks about the unemployment level standard of living inflation various other price levels in the economic scenario or as a whole for a country or the global the branches of economics are classified into two categories whereby microeconomics talks about the various aggregates of an household or an individual person like an individual income individual consumption individual saving individual investment product pricing output of an industry and various other individual aspects of the analysis on the other side the macroeconomics talks about the various decision makings at the national level and the aggregates that needs to be considered at the as a national income as aggregate consumption as national saving national output and not as a particular but as the whole industry to consider the definition of macroeconomics we should talk about a popular term or a definition which is given by ke bolding 
Macro economics deals not with the individual quantities as such, but the aggregate incomes with national income, not as an individual price, but with the price levels, not with individual output, but the national output. So what is the difference between the two? As I said, we are not concerned much about the individual aspect or a particular household or a particular firm or a particular industry. Now we are more concerned in our analysis with the aggregate of these households, these firms, these industry, taking the entire thing as a whole to our study. A definition by Gardner Ickley is very beautiful and he rightly says that macroeconomic deals with the economic affairs in the large, not as an individual. It concerns itself with the dimension of economic life, which looks at the total size and shape and the functioning of that giant elephant, which is the economy. A very good example given by him is, you are not talking about the trees in a forest, but you are talking about the entire forest, which is compressed of these trees. Let's quickly understand the nature of macroeconomics. Macroeconomics has a very simple analytical approach whereby it talks in a sense of study of aggregates of all these things, whereby it tries to make an approach in the aggregate level of understanding the unemployment level, the poverty level, the level of output, the inflation and deflation in the economy, and it concerns itself with all the indicators of the economic changes and variables. Talking about the areas which economic deals or the subject matter for which the economy is more concerned, so the study of macroeconomics is concerned with the theory of national income. I hope you are aware about the national income, the income of the entire country, the theory of unemployment to understand, to mark, that whether the resources are properly consumed, used in the economy or not, because we have the problem of scarcity and we need to make a choice. So whether these resources are fully employed or not. We talk about the theory of general price level that is determining whether the prices are properly fixed and whether these prices are going to create the future supply, are they able to meet the demand. So a general price level or an equilibrium is being set using this particular analysis. Then we also talk about the theory of money. My dear friends, recall your term M1, M2, M3, M4. So we have already studied about the theory of money also, whereby we used to talk about the broad money, the narrow money, and how this money is going to be in the circular flow of this economy. Theory of growth, or you talk about the economic welfare and economic growth, how you are going to approach towards making our country much more wealthy how it is going to achieve the level of sustainable development and sustainable economic growth. So we are talking about the welfare state also. It's not only the meeting the needy, it's also about how you are going to sustain in the future also. Then you have theory of international trade, the exports and imports, how you are going to enrich your country with the available resources and how you are going to get all these resources from outside also those who are in need. Then you have the business cycle or the trade cycle where you used to talk about the boom, recession, depression, recovery phases, how the economy is going to be into the circular motion of peaks and turfs. And you talk about the monetary and fiscal theories which are very popular in newspapers and media every day. Let's talk about the quick importance of macroeconomic study. You have already known and already aware about that microeconomic talks about the individual analysis. What is the importance of macroeconomic analysis? So it's not only studying one fruit of a tree, it is also important to study the entire tree that how it is going to be giving you foods, how it is going to be giving you shelter and how it is going to cover your needs also. So the quick importance of macroeconomics is to understand the functioning of this entire giant economy. Then you also study the national income and social accounts also. You many a times listen about the budget, you many a times listen about the fiscal policies, taxations and various other things. All these are rooted with your macroeconomic analysis. Then you have the study of economic growth as I discussed right now. You have a approach towards 
इकोनॉमिक वेलफेयर दिस ग्रोथ शुड बी सस्टेनेबल इट शुड नॉट बी फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम रादर इट शुड बी गिवन टू दी जनरेशन यू आर कमिंग चिल्ड्रेन शुड बी इंजॉइंग ऑल दिस इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ एंड प्रॉस्पेरिटी देन यू टॉक अबाउट फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसीज लाइक यू डिसाइड अबाउट योर ओन हाउस होल्ड लाइक यू डिसाइड अबाउट योर फर्म दैट हाउ मच यू शुड हैव एक्सपेंडिचर हाउ मच इनकम इज देयर Similarly, in our country also, you need to make various economic policies. How much debt is there? Is there any natural calamity, or what is the area zones which you need to grow, prosper for the economic welfare? You talk about the inflation and deflation also. That is the general price level. That how these prices are going to be influenced. Whether people will be able to afford them, or how you need to. change your policies so that it could be reached up to the maximum population then you have business cycles and last not least it also helps you to understand the micro economic phenomena every study has certain limitations let's quickly talk about the limitations of macro economics the first limitation is excessive thinking in terms of aggregate two apples and three oranges makes five fruits so you can have an good aggregate of these things which is of similar nature but tell me if you add up two oranges and three pencils will it be a right quantity although there will be five items but are they of the same nature no so you cannot have excessive level of aggregation in these study then there is another limitation of excessive generalization like we used to suffer from a trouble of heterogeneity in microeconomics similarly over here excessive level of homogeneity can also be not taken into our study then we have difference within the aggregates also there is a different age group there is a different gender there is a different income there is a different production so you cannot generalize all these things in one particular term the measure of value cannot be the money always but you need to understand their internal differences also and last not least is the heterogeneous element every component is heterogeneous in itself and you need to make a proper comparison between all these things let's talk about the types of macroeconomics macroeconomics is broadly categorized into three major categories The first category is static macro whereby it tries to throw light on a particular level of equilibrium achieved in an aggregate level but it does not throw any impact on the comparison of these particular things at a particular given point of time then you have number 2 whereby the same is compared and it is called as comparative macro static whereby there are two points and you try to make a comparison between two of these equilibrium level let's suppose there are two different level of consumptions pre covid 19 and post covid 19 what is the difference between these two levels so when you make an analysis it is an comparative macro static and the third one is macro dynamic nothing is constant in the economy there is every day a change coming every day you see the share price is rising and falling and there are various changes in the price level there are various changes in the supply side there are various changes in the demand side so when you try to make an study on a very dynamic platform for these changes it is macro dynamic analysis of the economic aspects let's move on with understanding of micro economics and macro economics the two studies are highly related with each other as i gave you example given by the definition of ecle that this entire economy is like a forest and you try to understand not a particular tree but the entire forest with the birds i view so in this study you need to make a relationship between microeconomic analysis and macroeconomic analysis whereby macroeconomics is highly dependent on microeconomic study and microeconomics has a major impact of macroeconomic policies and relations so there is a relationship between microeconomics and macroeconomics you need to understand 
that both of these two are separate study there are similarities there are dissimilarities also and both of these are interdependent so let's quickly talk about the few differences between microeconomics and macroeconomics microeconomics is the branch of economics which deals with economic decision making of individual economic agents such as producer or a consumer whereas macroeconomic deals with the aggregate and averages of entire economy the aggregate output the national income the aggregate savings and so on microeconomic takes into account small components of the whole economy it takes into the consideration the economy of any country as a whole microeconomic deals with price determination in case of individual products and factors of production whereas macroeconomic talks about the general price level in the economy microeconomics as you are already aware it is popularly known as the price theory whereas the macroeconomics is popularly known as the income theory microeconomics is more concerned with the optimization goals of individual consumers and producers like you think of yourself whereby whether you should have what type of discounts from amazon flipkart or any other e-commerce website and you compare it with the aggregate level of prices that is prevailing in the market on the other side macroeconomics is much more concerned about the optimization of presently available price level and consumption like just take it as example when you buy something from e-commerce site you just check the price that it cost rupees 999 or 1099 or whatever be the price and you check about the discount so that is micro level of approach for a particular commodity but when you see the total cart value of your purchasing from that e-commerce site and you add up the delivery charges any insurance or any other charge in that particular and you compare it with the general price level that is going to be charged so that is a macro economic analysis one you are comparing with an individual aspect and the other you are comparing with an aggregate aspect let's quickly talk about some similarities between microeconomics and macroeconomics the first similarity stands with microeconomic principles are used in macroeconomics also whereby the devaluation of money the economic policies the elasticity of demand all these are used in changing the price level and setting up a new equilibrium points second similarity says that microeconomics is dependent on macroeconomics and macroeconomics is dependent on microeconomics like the price level the fuel price level right now you have observed that the diesel prices and petrol prices has gone to the highest boom and both of these are putting an impact on the entire economy so the aggregate level has also increased and the individual is also suffering the third very important similarity of micro and macro economic study is blurring of distinction both of these studies are focused on a particular point of economic growth and like a river you cannot make a distinction between the two coast of these rivers or where does this river is going to be ending so in micro and macro economic study both of these things houses the same problems and same analysis is been done with two different levels of study interdependence between micro and macro economics both of these studies are the two sides of a similar coin whereby both of them are dependent on each other to understand the economy and formulate the policies the first interdependency is economic fluctuations both of these try to understand the economic fluctuations the cycles the changes which is coming into the economy into the market are significantly observed and analyzed at micro level also and macro level also the basis of economic laws whether you follow inductive method or deductive method both of these are useful in formulating a universally truth law which is going to be followed by the economic policy makers third theory of tariffs to decide the tariff 
the trade structure is based on macroeconomic aggregate and it is done with the help of the microeconomic analysis fourth role in international trade whereby you are approached towards deciding how you can be developing full employment level of your available resources to achieve the general equilibrium level which is an extension of microeconomics let's quickly talk about certain macroeconomic issues in the country there are certain important issues which needs to be answered with the help of macroeconomic analysis the key issues are employment and unemployment level employment and unemployment not only simply means the employment of human resource but all the resources available in the country whether it is land whether it is mineral whether it is any other natural resource available in the country so whether they are fully and optimally utilized or not then you have inflation which is a major problem in the country so you decide about the price level and you try to consider that what should be the optimum pricing level how you should be dealing with the problem of high price rate in the market third the trade cycle that is also a very important issue in the economy because this trade cycle is not only influenced by the internal environment but also the external environment and how the peaks and troughs how this boom recovery recession period is going to be there fourth economic growth whereby we talk about the welfare of the entire economy now we have an open economic concept whereby we try to have globalization privatization and liberalization so that we will be able to achieve the maximum of the countries and we will be able to target the optimum growth for the future generations also and fifth the exchange rate and the balance of payment you not only going to talk about the imports and exports in the country but you need to properly manage these things so that a proper balance of payment can be maintained for trade and business activities in the country in coming lectures we'll be talking about various macroeconomic indicators the theories of macroeconomy and how you are going to be taking decisions from the producer point of view so that the aggregate of the economy can be benefited thank you for now